get a little background. Is that good here? Is, is the angle? Is she going to be looking at me? Is that good? Yeah. A little red dot there. Red, red dot, dot, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the last time you and I really met was in the parking lot of Shaw Bucks. Right. When they were having the screen, the outdoor Go theater. Ghostbusters. Yeah. Right. That yeah. was bizarre. <laughs> Because our, my parking spot is right there. there. Yeah. And I do everything but put out popcorn. <laughs> and so when I told my wife, guess what we're doing tonight? We're going to my parking lot. <laughs> you know, those days, like, Greg, we're not going parking. <laughs> no. We're not doing that. None uh, of that. Yeah, none of that no. stuff. So see, it was just such a hoot yeah. that there it is on the big yeah. screen. Yeah. I, I imagine you could even sit in your car and watch the movie we right there. You did? We sat in the in car. In your car. I get the car because it was just elevated enough over yeah. the crowd. It was perfect. Oh, I saw another guy sitting in his car. He was watching. It's like you're at the, what did we call the drive-in theater? Drive-in theater. Outdoor. That so used to be fun. I went in and saw Kurt Johnson. He's the runner that owns Starbucks. I said, this is strange, but I want service. I want service in my car. I'll get a couple of cheeseburgers. Get your roller skates on and bring them out here. So he came out. He goes, I'll do it. Really? Yeah. So I said, all right, I'm going back out to watch the movie. So oh. I gave him a significant tip oh, as wow. he brought out you know, a couple of burgers. And Good a, idea. Uh, it, was a, it was bizarre. <laughs> driving. Yeah, the driving. Pizza. You know, in Europe, they have those drive-in theaters. Well, they're not drive-in. They're outdoor theaters, and there's chairs all over. You just walk in. Is that right? And they have chairs all over in front of the screen, and you watch the beautiful nights, nice and warm. So that's fun. They don't have them now, or they might have them in some towns, but this was back in the 60s when they had those outdoor. I remember the 60s. Yeah. <laughs> the good 60s. Are we about ready, Todd? Sure, we're ready. Okay, is this, this is not, this was not on. Yeah. I thought this, you're on there? You're okay? It's got a red. Um, yeah, we are. You good? Red dot. Keep looking at the screen, okay. All right, Kathy, here yes. we are. So yeah. my, my assignment that your daughter gave me mm -hmm. was to talk to you in anticipation of the 2022 100th anniversary of the parish St. Nicholas Church. Right. Which, by the way, is located right across the street from where my mother, my mother, uh, Chapman, grew up. Really? Yes. So that whole Constantine, <gasps> yes. Carlson, Gladys Peterson. No kidding. They all grew up together. So Chris Constantine and all of that group. Which house was your hers? I think it was like 28 Chapman. So it's kind of okay. catty corner. Okay. So Ch uh, Chapman's the one that, okay, goes that way. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, so, all right. So anyways, just my family has a connect. Connection. Yeah, to oh, the St. Wow. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church. Yeah. She used to go there. And then, then they, she would take them to the Baptist church, uh -huh. just for kicks. And so, yeah, it goes way back. Oh, wow. So, give me a little bit about your background. You, where were you born? I was born right here in Jamestown, Jamestown. WCA. And your, your maiden name? Titso, T-S-I-T-S-O. And your parents, what did they do for a living? My father had a dry cleaners. He came over from Europe when he was 16 years old, came with his two brothers, and uh, they landed in New York, but I don't know why, but they went to Columbus, Ohio. There they had a um, uh, confectionery store, that, like a bakery, sweets and stuff. And then from there they came to Jamestown, and I never asked him why he came to Jamestown, but his brothers and he came to Jamestown, and uh, he got a job, even my uncle was a, he had a dry cleaners too. And he, he was single at the time and he started working, he got some money and he built a house and then he went back to Greece to find a wife. So he let his family know he was looking for a wife and he did find one and they were married in Greece and then they came over. So talk to me about your mother. My mother? Uh, she, when she came over, she uh, didn't speak English, of course. She learned a little, but she had a lot of uh, women in the area. They were Albanian, so she picked up that language before she even picked up English. 
she knew a little English, but not as much as she did the Albanian, but she knew her Greek too, of course. But uh, she was like a seamstress. So she found a job at Bigelow's mm. and she was in the bridal department. She worked there for many years and then she worked for Olga's up on the corner of 4th and Main, I think. And she also helped my dad in the shop because a lot of things had to be altered like pants or whatever and she would do that too. So she had like a little office in the back where she sewed. Yeah. So your mother, was she Albanian then? No, she's Greek. She was Greek. And your dad was Greek? He was born in Albania, but he went to all these Greek schools. They didn't have any Albanian schools at the time. He went to the Greek church. Everything was in Greek that he learned. So when they came here, they, of course, joined the Greek church. I, I got to pause just for a second because there were really two churches. Yes. There's the Albanian church and then there was the, the Greek, Greek church. church. Tell me a little what you may know about the two separate churches. Well, years ago, the Albanian church, well, was below our old church. We haven't, our church right now is the round church. Be, behind it is our first church. And uh, when you went down the hill, we had steps there. You would go down the steps and on Sprague Street, just before you got to the corner where you turn, that's where the Albanian church was. Mm. Yeah, it was there for many years. And uh, we used to, you know, just walk down there and go over there a lot. We knew a lot of the kids from there. So when we were little, we, you know, come back and forth. We'd go down or they'd come up. And then later on, they moved up to... Uh, what is it, Palmer Street? Palmer Street, yeah. Yeah, Palmer. The building is still there. Do they still have it? Is it still church? No. On, on Sprague? Palmer, on Palmer. On Palmer, they're still there. Right. They're still there. The BPU is now, have all these, whatever they have there on uh, Sprague Hill, so that building's not there, the church where they were. Is that a natural distinction between the Albanian church and then the Greek Orthodox church? Well... The, the religion is the same, everything is the same. They might be under a different bishop or something, but they have their own language, but the services, the liturgies are the same. Mm -hmm. Customs, everything's the same, the, the food, the, everything, pretty much. So when you came around, when you were born, and I'm not gonna ask you your date of birth, <laughs> uh, were you, did you grow up in the Greek Orthodox? I did, but. We didn't have a Sunday school in our church huh. at that time. So my brothers and I had to go to the Episcopal St. Luke's Church because the Episcopal Church at that time was about very similar to the Greek, the only other, or the only one that's close enough. So they thought that we could go to uh, Sunday school there. In the morning, we would go there Sunday morning, and then we would go to our church for the liturgy, at the Greek church after Sunday school. But a few years later, we did have a Sunday school, and I did go to Sunday school at our church. But in the beginning, that's what we used to do. So let's back up for a second. Family-wise, your dad said he came, you said your dad came over with your, his brothers. Two brothers. Who were they? Well, the one, his name was uh, Miller. He had a dry cleaners. And the other brother's name was Jim, Dimitri. He had a dry cleaners also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then it's, so it's the three boys come over here, and you're not quite sure why that happened. No, why they picked Jamestown, I always assume it be was because of my uncle Miller. He must have known somebody here, know there were some people, or I don't know. We don't have any other relatives here in Jamestown. At that time, there weren't any. So I don't know why they picked, and I never asked. <laughs> so your dad is born Greek, your mother's born Albanian? No, no. Mom's born Greek. She was born in oh, Greece. Oh, just the opposite, sorry. Yeah, my dad was born in Albania, gotcha. but he went to Greek schools. And yeah. what is, siblings, do you have siblings? I do. I have three brothers. My oldest is 10 years older than I am. And then I have one eight years older and another three years older, and I was the baby. And what are their names? My oldest brother's name is Spurl. The next one is Nick, and the third one is Terry. Y'all in the, in, the, in the area here? No, just one. The oldest brother's still here, lives here in Jamestown. The other two live in Florida. So you grew up here in St. Luke's Episcopal Church. 
And did the name O'Pray, was that part of your world? Dennis O'Pray, oh yeah. And I went to school with his daughter. She and I were the same age. So I was in that house very often. And I also went up to the bell tower. Because mm. she used to have to do that up in the bell tower. So I would go up with her and up it to the bell tower. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, so I've been over there many times in their house. Was George O'Pray the rector at that time? Oh, is it George? Yeah, so, yeah I think George, so. yeah, and then of course Dennis was one of the, one of the boys there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and a little bit of family connect, further family connect. Dennis married Lynette Carlson, and Lynette oh. Carlson is my cousin. Oh, really? And Lynette's dad grew up on Chapman Street, oh. across from where you guys are. Oh, okay. So that's the part of the interconnectedness. Yeah, here. and. Uh, when uh, we were, I think her name was Maureen. Was it Maureen O'Pray? Maureen, right? I'm not sure. But anyhow, when we graduated, we had her father, the, the one that gave us our uh, diploma. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. So, yeah, Reverend O'Pray gave it to us. Yeah. So, hey, Liz, how are you? <laughs> in the normal, when you came back from St. Luke's and you went back to the Greek was church, it, was it named St. Nicholas? Greek Orthodox oh, yeah. Church mm -hmm. um, What was the liturgy like? What was it? The liturgy like it back was, then? It was all in Greek. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like it is today, but it's, it was all in Greek. Yeah. When did you learn Greek? Well, I grew up with it. We didn't have a Greek school. Most Greek churches have Greek schools, but we didn't because we didn't have that many Greeks. Uh, we have a lot of Albanian people in our church. So uh, I just learned Greek from my parents. That's all, you know, whatever they, they would speak Greek in the house, and that's what I learned, yeah. Did they get newspapers from the old country? Did they, I, did they read Greek? Um, yeah, my mom and dad read Greek and everything. I'm not sure, like my dad must have gotten some Greek papers, I'm sure, but I don't ever remember seeing them. Was English uh, easy for your parents? For my dad, I think it was pretty easy because he was in, with people all day long. So I think he picked it. He came when he was 16, so I think he picked it up quickly. For my mother, it was a little harder because she was not out there that much. And, but she picked it up slowly. She never learned to, to read and write much, just a little. But uh, she spoke it, you know, pretty good, able to get a job and hold a job with it. So that was pretty good, yeah. As you're attending the uh, St. Nick's Greek Orthodox Church from day one, uh, did you learn much about its history? Did some of the old senior members, I don't want to use old timers, talk about in the beginning what it was like or <laughs> how they got started? Yeah, I can't, well, I can't remember too much, you know, exactly how it got started. Father George, when he came with his son, Terry Genethus, mm -hmm. um, I think there was another uh, priest maybe before, very shortly, but uh, yeah, they, he kind of, Father George is the one that kind of really got it going, I believe. Yeah. But that would have been a little bit later. I mean, Father George doesn't go back to the 1920s. I time? don't know yeah. the years. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. If I, I don't remember. We have it all, you know, written down and all that, but I don't remember exactly. Uh, just for the record, it's the, I had a chance to interview Terry. You did? Uh, many years ago. I won't go into the background on why that happened, but I suspect when whoever's listening to this tape might want to go to the Jackson Center and see if there's some stuff about his family, the church, which mm -hmm. happened to just come in the, in the normal course of things. Uh, so as you're growing up in the, in the church, uh, was, is there an active youth group? Was there much? Mm, not really, because, you know, we didn't have a Sunday school in the beginning. But later on, I guess, you know, with the Sunday school, when I was little, we used to go, like our teacher would take us ice skating down in uh, Harrison Street. Remember where that ice place is down there? Endless, in the back, they had a, ice skating, yeah. Yeah, they had an ice skating rink back then. She used to take us there ice skating. 
Her name was Dorothy Ketchy. She was yeah. our yeah, Sunday school teacher. Yeah. And then later on, of course, as more children came, then they started doing more things with children. There weren't, yeah, a lot of us little guys, but. <laughs> and again, that's all in Greek. Yeah. Being taught. Well, well at church, it wasn't all Greek. Was it? No. Good. Yeah. The liturgy was in all Greek. Okay. But everybody's pretty much spoke English. There was some Greek, some Albanian, yeah. family, what are some of the families that you remember being young and being part of the church? Just name names. Uh, you mean they're like... Last the, names, you know, so the such and such family, the, De yeah. the Deppas family or whatever. Yeah, there was the Hennis family, Andrew and his, uh, well mostly it was Andrew, but he had, he has a brother, uh, I can't remember, Herbie. what is it? Herbie. Herb, yeah. Yeah, I remember Herb. <laughs> he was a good dancer, Herb. <laughs> Uh, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, Herb and Andrew and their mother was Evan Thea. Okay, and uh, there was the Beers family, Mary Beers, and she had a few brothers. It was her mom and dad and two brothers, John and uh, Tom. Tom. Right. Okay. And who else was there? Oh, I can't remember. The Constantines were there. Oh yeah, the Constantines. I lived right near the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the Deppises, of course, yeah, and uh, the, the, the Micuses, yeah, there's like, uh, was it seven children, maybe, mm -hmm. yeah, and who else? There was a lot of other uh, people, too, that are not around anymore, and they weren't here very long, but I don't, re they were older people that I don't, re I kind of remember them, but not very well, and they moved on. Um, yeah. Who was the priest? Father Genethus, Father George Genethus. And so he was there when, your first memory of a priest is George Genethus. Yeah, and he didn't speak English. Uh. So, yeah, and it was, yeah, it was hard to, we, you know, talk to him, but he, he was like a, a saint to us. Very, very pious man, very wonderful man. And uh, we just, you know, we're like afraid to talk to him. It was like, it was, he was very nice, but it was hard talking to him. Was he a full-time priest or did he have a job? No, he was full-time. And what, did he have other parishes? No. Just St. Nick's? Yep. So if you had to guess numbers-wise, as far as just the congregation at that time, uh, that, uh, that Father George had of that group? Yeah, I don't know. As a kid, I can't, it seemed like the church was full. You know, it was a small church. I would say, and we had, we had chairs on the side, and I think we had the men on one side and the women on the other. Mm. Yeah. And on the side of the church were like these little things, that, uh, chairs that would pop out, you know, against the wall, and they would sit there. And then we had some uh, chair, not chairs, but benches, I think. I can't remember. Yeah, but it seemed like it was pretty full. And we used to have the choir loft upstairs in the back, and Terry was the choir director. Yeah. Women on one side, men on another, is that? Yeah. Part of the faith? I, well, I don't know. At that time, I don't know. It might have been a custom. I don't know. Like, uh, when we've gone to churches in uh, Europe, there, I guess people sit all over. Maybe it was just back in the time. I'm not sure. Yeah. Then at some point, uh, Father George, does, does he die or does he leave? He died. He died. And then... Uh, then who was next? Yeah, I don't remember exactly who came next. We were trying to think of that last night. I can't remember. And then Father Nick comes in at some point here. Oh yeah, later on, yeah. several priests later. Okay. Uh, the Genethus family, were they from here or did they 
come. They came. Father and Father George came with uh, Terry. Terry. The two of them came first. Yeah. Then the rest of the family came. And Terry started his business with the uh, graphic art design. With the, that mm -hmm. And we used to do. Uh, we used to write up a lot of newsletters and things like that for the church. Terry would get us together. Most of the young kids, he'd get together and we'd go over to his house and he would do all this stuff and he showed us how, to, how it works and everything. We'd help him. Yeah. Uh, at the Jackson Center, just to the side, there's a lot of posters in the Jackson Center and that was given to us by Terry. Really? Who had obtained those when he was at the, right after the war, uh -huh. he was in Paris and running up and down the River Seine. Really? Uh, get those booths for the books and posters and uh -huh. just picked them up. No kidding. Put them in a valise, forgot about them, and then pulled them out, you know, a few years ago uh -huh. and gave them to us. Great. They're spectacular. Yeah. I, I digress, but. That's all right. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that was Terry. And so in your group, you, as far as schooling, was there a catechism that you had in the Orthodox Church, like the Catholics? No. No. So you went to Jamestown High School? Yes. And graduated the class of? 61. 61. And that would have been Dennis's class, or no, Maureen's class, right? Maureen O'Cray. Yeah. And did you have a, did your, did your parents have a sense as to what you should be doing as a uh, recently graduated high school student? <laughs> Mom wanted me to be a teacher because her mother was a teacher in Greece, but I didn't want to be a teacher. <laughs> what did you want to be? I didn't really know. I wanted to be an architect, but I never, you know, did anything about that. But I just went to business school and became a secretary. Where did you work here in Jamestown? Did I work here? I worked at Art Metal. Okay. Yeah. And down there at Jones and Gifford? Yes. Okay. Who's your boss? Ah, I can't remember. He was the treasurer. I can't remember his name. Oh, you're off the big dogs. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, I can't remember his name. And did you stay there right to the end of our battle? No, no, I was there only one year. Was that right? Yeah. And then after that, my mom and I, my father had died when I, just when I was going to business school, he died. And so about a year later, my mother took me to Greece, so we went to Greece for six months. That's your first time there? First time. So you're over in Greece, did you then meet family members? And yes, all my mother's family. Yeah. She took me to her little town where she was born. She showed me the house where she was born. She uh, left that little town and moved to the second largest city, Salonika. That's where she grew up. Yeah, she was one of nine children. Mm. And she's the only one of all those children that came or that left Greece. They all, all the others remained there. She was the only one that left. Was that hard on her family for her to leave? Uh, yes, it was very hard. But somehow they manage, I guess. <laughs> Even for my mom, I don't know how she did it to leave your family and go. And yeah, but she did. Uh, when the boys were like. My two brothers, oldest brothers, when they were maybe three and four or something like that, she took them to Greece. My father didn't go with her. She just took the two boys, and she visited her family there for several months. Yeah, she was homesick, so she wanted to see everyone. So my brothers learned <coughs> Greek very well. When they came home, they had a hard time going to school because they had learned all this Greek, and they forgot their English. <laughs> was that a difficulty for you? Was that what? Difficulty for you, language-wise? Uh, your right brain says Greek, <laughs> your left brain says English? No, it wasn't too bad. It just that I, you know, you didn't have somebody to help you with your homework. That's what, my brothers helped some, but yeah, you know, when you want your parents to read to you in, Greek, in English or help you out with something, but that was a little hard. Yeah. You're... Grown up, uh, taught Greek. You attend a Greek Orthodox church, which was a very small church congregation as far as yes. the city was concerned. Uh, did when you were in grade school or middle school, did people treat you any differently? No. 
There was like, uh, well, there was there was a few Greeks in school like through the years, you know, my brother's ages and some before. So like all through the, as we grew up, you know, people were familiar with the Greeks. So we didn't have any problem. So none, none of this. No. I, when you went to Sunday school, did you bring some of your friends who were non-Greeks? No, I don't remember doing that. Mm -mm. I have a corporate memory personally of our church, the Baptist, uh, having been invited to go to St. Nick's for more of an educational opportunity and stuff like that, teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wondered if that was something that was, you, you remember that? Oh yeah, all? I don't remember. An outreach? No, I don't remember that. Uh-uh. Uh, yeah. Obviously we're very Could have been, yeah, yeah. could have been, but I don't remember. So. Things that you did in church, you know, your family and stuff as you, well, let me back up. What was a normal Sunday like? What time would you go to like, for example, Sunday school with, at St. Luke's? Yeah, well, I I believe like we would go like around 9.30 or so maybe. Like I, I assume church started at 10 at our place, but I, I don't really remember for sure. But yeah, then we'd come to our church and then we'd s sit downstairs with our parents and uh, yeah. Then after the, the the service is over, was that a community time? Were there? We did have yeah, we did have a <laughs> fellowship hall downstairs. And to tell you the truth, I can't remember. Like every Sunday, if we went downstairs, I really can't remember. I know we used to use that hall downstairs for many things. We used to have dances and other things like that, and other things going on. We must have gone downstairs because yeah, we had a little kitchen and everything. We must have gone down after church. Well, during a normal week, was there Wednesday services? Were there uh, other than Sunday, were there other services? I'm sure there were. I don't remember as a little child in, in that old church. Right. I don't remember our first church, but I'm sure there were. Yeah, I used to go with my mom to go to church, yeah during the day, during the week, yeah. At some point, you build a new church. Yep. You know, the Church in the Round. Do you remember that buzz when somebody had to make some decisions about, <laughs> because I assume because of expansion, or was it because the building, the old church was being... Yeah, not quite big enough, and they wanted to have something, you know, bigger, and we did have an architect in the church, and so I think it was, you know, helped a lot. They all started talking about, I guess it was it in the 60s, I think. Yeah. Do you remember being part of that, your dad being part of the fundraising, the capital campaign, any of that stuff? No, I'm sure they were, but I really don't, yeah, I don't remember for sure. Because that's a real leap of faith. Yeah. To build a church, any church, but build yeah. that again. Yeah. Well, my dad died in 62, so he probably wasn't too, you know. I think it was after that is when they started. Do you remember the ribbon cutting all of a sudden the, yeah. they opened it? Yeah. And I remember we did put something in the new, uh, in the front wall, I think, down at the bottom, you know, one of those things behind the Time capsule? Yeah. I don't remember what was put in there, though, but I remember that that happened. Yeah. Uh, so when does a guy named George enter your life? George? <laughs> Well, I met George in, in Toronto. Hey. <laughs> I was there on a weekend with some other friends of ours, uh, two sisters from our church and two sisters from the Albanian church. And we happened to be at Liz's, uh, Liz uh, Fredericks. Her sister was getting married and they invited her mom and them invited us to her, was the uh, uh, your sister's uh, in Frewsburg. Is it yeah. Frewsburg? Yeah. yeah. She invited us there, a bunch of people, I don't know, before the wedding. And uh, these girls were there, these sisters, and they told me that they were going to go to to Canada for the weekend. And I asked them if I could go with them. <laughs> <laughs> there was five of us all together, five girls. They said, sure, come on with us. So we went to Canada. We went to Buffalo first, and then we went to Canada. 
George was a waiter at the one of the restaurants that we went to. He wasn't our waiter, but he was a waiter there. And that's where I kind of met him. There were a whole bunch of Greek waiters. And uh, the maitre d' was Greek, and he talked to us because we heard him talking on the phone, and we realized he was Greek. So we started talking to him, and he says, after we're done, he said, well, I think we asked them. We asked him, where can we go, you know, to a nice Greek place for dancing? And he told us where we could go. And he says, by the way, when we're done here, we'll come there, too. We'll meet you there. <laughs> so that's where I met George. So you meet him there in Toronto. Yeah. What was he doing in Toronto? He was a waiter. Okay. He, had, he was going to school. He wanted to be an engineer. He had gone through one year of school, just bought a new car, and he figured I can make a lot of money uh, being a waiter, so I will forego school for the moment and start, you know, making some money. And so he didn't go. He didn't go back to school. He was a waiter when I met him. So he's up in Toronto. You obviously have to go back to Jamestown. How does he stay in touch? <laughs> we wrote a lot of letters, and uh, we. I would go to uh, Toronto. He would come here. And we used to have dances at our church in October. I met him in September. And then October we had a dance. We, that was our second or third dance maybe I, that we started. And uh, I invited him to come and bring some of those other friends of his. And so they came and everybody got to meet him. <laughs> and then we would just go back and forth. And I brought my mother to Canada and she met the family. And, how that happened. This kind of briskly go over, <laughs> that's how that happened, the rest <laughs> is history. <laughs> uh, at some point he decides he's going to want to make this much more serious. Where did he propose to you? Um, let's see. We met in September. So it was about, uh, I think around March, I think, he so proposed. Of this coming next year. Yeah, wow. Yeah, March. We didn't mess around then. No, we had a big engagement party. We had the priest. We uh, had it at our house, at Mom's house. And the priest came, and he uh, did the ceremony where they put your engagement ring on. It's part of the the ceremony. So, really? Yeah. This so is pretty had, formal then. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we did that at Mom's house. and That was in March, and we were married in May. Fantastic. Well, and then the rest is history. Uh, when did George? When did you decide to do? Did George move here? I mean, George is up in Toronto, and then you're here. Yeah. Well, that's he decided he would come to Jamestown because he had enough of this big city business, you know, and uh, he didn't have a job here in Jamestown, and uh, but he figured. You know, I'll go to I'll go to Jane. He liked the area. He liked the people. They were very friendly. He said, and it's nice and small. It doesn't take you forty five minutes to get anywhere. And so I decided to come move here. I thought maybe I was going to move to Greece or something, but that didn't happen. <laughs> so he moves here. What's he do? What's, what's his first job? Well, his first job was working at. Well, he did. Let's see. He his first job job was a crescent tool. He was working there, and he did some waitering, too. He was a waiter, because he really enjoyed that. Did he ever want to do a restaurant? Yes, he really did want to open a restaurant, but I told him no. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I figured, as far as I could see, you're married to that restaurant, and you're there all the time, and your kids are growing up, and you don't get a chance to see them. So I said, no, I don't want to have a restaurant. I don't think that's a good idea. But he came from a family with restaurants. So, so at some point, the El Greco woodworking becomes creative. Yeah. What was the impetus behind that? Well, there was another family in Greece, uh, in, uh, in our church. Uh, let me see. He, um, he was working for Artone. The factory before we bought it was Artone, and they were making uh, grandfather clocks. It's Calamaries. Yes. Okay. They were making grandfather, uh, grandfather clocks. And uh, 
they, this friend asked him if he would like to come and help because they needed some help. So George said, sure, I'll come and, you know, help out or something. And he really enjoyed working. Well, he used to work with wood because he made himself two guitars and he used to make bird cages and sell them. But uh, he enjoyed the work there and he's looking at the factory and everything. And later on, he didn't work there very long. Uh, it was just part time here and there. And he said to this other gentleman, he says, why don't we buy this <laughs> factory and make furniture? So that's and what he did. He went to the library and he learned all the what it, you know, all these different words, because in Greek he knew all this stuff, but in, you wanted to see how they, what the words were in English about, you know, working in a factory, all these different things that he had to know. And that's how he said, well, eventually they did buy it, and they didn't make uh, clocks, but they did make furniture, and at the time there was this Andy Tangelos, have you ever heard of him? He was part of our church, too. Andy? Andy Tangelos. Tangelos, yeah, yeah, sure, oh, yeah. sure, sure, yeah, yeah. And he had something to do with furniture, too. I can't remember exactly what, but together, and he was like sort of helping George, and we just designed some tables, and we started doing something like that, and then it started grow, growing. And then you actually, I, of course, caught up with you guys on First Street. Mm -hmm. yeah, where were you before that? That was it. On that First, was it, First Street? Yes, that the was Broadhead First, Mills? Right, okay. that's where it all started, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then the rest of the course of that is history. Uh, but by the way, when did you get in the cribs part of the crib business? Uh, the cribs was like, uh, let's see, Dimitri, we had a store in Buffalo, a retail store. And Dimitri was going to college in Buffalo. I think it was his first year and he would, after school, he would come and help in the store as selling furniture. And then he went on to from Buffalo, he went to, uh, he only was in Buffalo, I think, one year, and then he went on to University of Rochester. Graduated from Rochester, let's see, Alexis graduated in, I think he graduated in 96, I think. Okay, so about that time, we had met this man who was, came into our factory from out of town, and he was asking George if he could make cribs. Well, we've never made cribs. George always made custom furniture, tables, chairs, hutches, desks. He wanted us to make cribs. So we started talking about cribs. And uh, that's when Dimitri was just graduating. And he was looking around for work. He was just trying to decide what he wanted to do. And he, when he was, came home, he heard about this crib stuff, and he decided he wanted to join the business. So that's when he, he came first and started helping with when we decided to do these cribs. Which has become a mainstay. Yes. That's a, that's yeah. a remarkable story. Uh, back to the church. Um, so after Father George passes away, and then there's an interim, what's the next... Uh, priest that you remember? That I remember. Well, I'm not sure who came first, but I remember there was Father uh, Carluzos, there was Father Memphis, and there was another one, I think, uh, before that. Yeah. Now, again, they were just doing your congregation. They weren't doing a circuit of other churches. No, no, they, they were that? our... But before that, we had many other priests, too. I can't remember their names, but we had some other ones before them, I think, too. Well, again, my memory is Father Nick. Mm -hmm. uh, his son went to school with me. Um, and when, when he came, he wasn't from here, was he, Father Nick? He came from New York. Uh, New Jamaica, I think. Is that right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Jamaica. Yeah. And he was here for quite a long time, wasn't he? 25 years, maybe. Exactly. And he died here, didn't he? Or, yes, he did. Yeah. He he married my daughter Alexis. Uh, yep. He was sick at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even shortly after that. Yeah. Uh, of that time period, it seemed to be a growth time period. A lot of activity at the church. Um, 
Can you can you attribute to his leadership? Ah, uh, yes, in a way, yeah. He was very well known. He would go out, you know. He knew everybody. Yeah, so I think it kind of church kind of grew a lot from that. Did you have folks that were kind of uh, as things you marry into the community and other folks come along who are not Greeks? Uh, were you attracting people who were had no Greek relationships at all? We did some. Mm -hmm. I, I think more, yeah, later on than in the beginning. Yeah, that kind of happened later on. How do you see the growth? That, you know, you've been here all your life. Um, just kind of, uh, can you identify and describe the growth of the church and, and why uh, it was? Well, I'm not sure why. I don't know. It grew, but we did have, in the beginning, we had a lot of... Uh, People at our time, just like, like, I don't know, downtown, we had a lot of uh, stores and everything, and eventually they, you know, left and went to the mall, and we had a lot of people that left and they went to bigger cities, or they died or something. But yeah, in the beginning, we didn't get a lot of new people. So I think that happened later on, as the other newer priests came and sort of helped with bringing in new people, and then the festival. We started the festival, and that kind of helped bring in more people that were willing or interested in the church and wanting to join. What was the gen genesis of the Yasu Festival? Ah, uh, that was with a new uh, couple that came to our church. Zinnius, I think his name was Lou Zinnius or something like that. And he was the one that kind of, I think he would talk to Father Nick, I think it was. I think it was at the time Father Nick was there. And he started talking about a festival. Evidently they had, you know, wherever he was from or something, he knew about them, and that's, I think, kind of how it started. We used to have bingo before that to raise the money, and Father Nick was not happy with bingo. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that's become a cultural institution now. Yeah. Yeah. We're very lucky we have something like that. People enjoy it. Helps sustain the, the, fin church. the finances. It does, that. yes, it does help a lot. Where do you think the church, you know, uh, five years from now, ten years from now, because part of what's going on on your 100th anniversary is sort of strategic planning, thinking about what could be? I don't know. I With the young children that we have today, I think it, it could grow a lot. Yeah, they'll. I'm sure they'll bring up a lot of things. I'll be more... Like the the different things that we have, like Goya and everything, I think those will get bigger and we'll get more children involved in doing different things. Because there was a time in our in our church when we had a lot of sports and the kids would play and they would get trophies and things like that. And we sort of got away from that, but I think that will all come back. Yeah. What's Goya? Greek Orthodox Youth of America. Ah. Yeah. One of, the, one of the individuals that I would hope to interview is John Regis. Yes. What does, what was John's relationship to the St. Nick's Church? Well, we didn't know John. We didn't know any of the Regis. We had, um, there were families like from the areas of, out of Jamestown, like Olean and Wellsville, Cowdersport, all those places. We've, we heard the names, but we didn't really know them. I myself don't ever remember George, I mean, uh, John coming to the church. He might have come when I was young and I just didn't know who he was. He must have, you know, come, but I don't remember him when I was little. So I really didn't know that family very much. But I did meet him later on. Yeah, I'm not sure what the backstory is, but I, I think there's some finances, financial support he gave. He did. Yeah. He gave a lot of money. He helped a lot in our church. I think they still do help a lot. But yeah. Um, so what's the question I should be asking you, Kathy? What's As we were sitting and you're saying, oh my gosh, Greg's coming in to my house. Yeah. Uh, what's he going to ask? And uh, Have yeah. I asked it yet? I don't know. I, I don't like there's things that have happened that I can't remember and then as we're talking I think of other things like I had forgotten about when all the 
the kids were growing up before me, like a lot of the boys and everything, and how they had all that sports. And we used to go to other churches and join their youth, you know. And Terry Genethis had a lot to do with a choir, and he used to take us to choir conventions and things like that. And um, I don't know, I just, things come up as we're talking, but I have forgotten a lot of stuff. And I just hope that the youth today will get more involved with other churches and like go to the choir conventions because they're a lot, a lot of fun and you get to meet other people of your ethnic uh, background and everything and you learn a lot of new things. And it's, it's very interesting because we have very few Greek, you know, families here and you don't hear the language that much and it's nice to get together with those people. To this day, there's the St. Nick's Greek Orthodox Church and like I say on Palmer Street, the Albanians, you guys right. get together? We do. We get together sometimes, yeah. They come to our church. We've been to theirs. We know them very well. When Mom was, uh, she used to know a lot of the Albanian ladies, and she used to go to their houses. They used to come to our houses, and we have a big uh, tradition with name days, and especially the men in the family. Uh, when that saint comes up, like St. George, when it's his, like in March, is St. George, the family would have a uh, name day party and everybody's welcome. Mm. And they just know that, and at the, at, when we were growing up, that was what was going on in both churches. And we used to get all these people that we knew from both churches come visit the house. We'd go visit there. My mom and dad would take us children and we'd sit around and watch, you know, <laughs> all these older people would talk and get together and. We used to enjoy going to other people's houses, and that was fun. We did a lot of getting together, and we used to have a lot of dances in, in the church years ago. Somewhere downtown, I can't remember if it was the Vikings or where, we used to go upstairs in some of these buildings, and we'd have these Greek dances. No kidding. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah the, the Viking Lodge there in the third floor, fourth floor, yeah, it's a big dance hall. I'm sure we must have, yeah, because I remember somewhere downtown when I was little, we used to go to these places. I don't know right now exactly where they were, but we used to go. It was fun. So dancing is yeah. a very much part of your culture. It is, yeah. And I, we I, really enjoyed it, yeah. And, and when they'd come to our houses, sometimes we'd end up dancing <laughs> when we'd come for the name days or whatever. We would do that, yeah. It's fun. Well, I see it in your sons when they're out there dancing, and uh, yeah. man, they, they jump enjoy it. Can't, yeah. I wouldn't even think of jumping, man. <laughs> and the kids enjoy it too. Yeah. yeah. You've got to have someone yeah. that's so much fun. Well, it's great. You guys have been such an active part of the community and certainly represent the Greek community incredibly well. Thank uh, you. Not only El Greco, but. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, that means the Greek, the Greek in Spanish, yeah. yeah. George didn't know what to name it, and he came up with that. He said, the Greek. So. The Greek, yeah. Well, great. This has been fabulous. Oh, Todd, what's a question I should be asking your mother-in-law? <laughs> um, does she have a particular fond memory of an event? It could be just some Sunday occurrence when something happened. Um, maybe there was a wedding proposal there at the coffee hour. <laughs> Who knows? It could have been anything. Was, is there anything that just sticks out as like, I remember that, and that was hilarious. An aha moment. An yeah. aha moment. Hmm. Good question. I don't know. I can't remember. I know, I know when, uh, when I was little, we used to have a, a, was it the old church, I think, or was it, a, they had a fellowship hall, and it, other than the uh, ladies that got together for the Irene Society, we had another fellow, it was called the Fellowship, and the men and women, and they used to dress up for Halloween. I could remember seeing my mom dressing up in Halloween because they would go to the parties, the church party, and they all had to dress up. That was funny, watching them get dressed. But yeah, I, I don't remember anything else. Uh, I'm sure there was, but it just doesn't come well, to me right now. Well, something unusual that may have happened during a church service. I, some of my best memories are crazy things that happened when you least expected it. Somebody falling off a podium, somebody, mm. you know, all those things like that. Do you remember anything no. unusual like that? I remember at high school that one of our classmates fell out of the balcony in the auditorium. 
Really? Yeah. Oh, really? I won't even guess what happened. <laughs> she was okay. Yeah, but yeah. Yikes. Yeah. That's a that's a fun. <laughs> What's a question I should be asking? You know, you know, Kathy's got something she's not telling us. Ah. I don't remember it. Yeah, this is your, this is the time to sneak it this up. This is my opportunity to yeah. ask. I've been trying to think along with you, Kathy. Huh? Yeah, I don't know. Nothing's coming to mind. I remember when Liz and her sister came and her, with her mom, dad. Yeah. Remember her mom's restaurant. Which was for the camera? So which was? I don't remember the name on Third Street. The Rainbow. What is it? Rainbow? Rainbow? Yeah. We had some restaurants around that belonged to different uh, yeah, Greeks and Albanians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the various college communities where I've been to, the Greeks always had the hot dog places. Yes, we had some. Did they have them here too? Mm-hmm. Yep. The Verlenis had a hot dog down on Main Street. There's another Greek Yeah. Down by the Vidoc. Okay. What was it called? Vans. Vans, right. Well, that's not, they, they, you can go there and buy a hot dog at that same location. Yeah. <laughs> as we speak. Oops. Yeah. Here. Yeah. yeah. This has been fabulous. Yeah. Thank you. It's been fun. And yeah. you're the first. You're the first know, person the of this first. project. Oh, you yeah. guys got to, yeah. Well, you've set the baseline some, yeah. really high. Oh. Well, you got me worried here. I didn't know what to expect. That's what ah! <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then, as we talk, I, I, I forget things too. I can't remember exactly all these. So many things happen, but I, you know. Well, here's what's gonna, here is what will happen because this project's going to go on for a little bit. Uh, you will come up with something and you're going to tell your daughter, I can't believe I forgot this. Yes, so gonna right. Write it down and we'll be back. Oh. <laughs> this is, this is I'll just write it down and you can record yeah, it or something. Like <laughs> professional, yeah, you don't need me. You got a professional. Oh. Right here. <laughs> oh. well, thank you. Well, thank you. It was yeah. fun. I look forward. I hope you get yeah. some good, uh, whatever. <laughs> this is uh, I used, who's got that? Do you have? Do you have a significant photo? catalog of the church? Has there been people who've been keeping well, pictures? Well, I, I have, yeah, uh, like especially when Father Nick was here, I have a little photo album that with a lot of stuff in there. We, yeah. Huh? We had probably three or four albums and we were trying to track them down because the ladies who were managing those two was Virginia Leak and, um, and of the Marie archives? Leak and Virginia Cumming of the archives. Right. 